You're on. Hi everyone, I am here with your Bible reading. I hope you're having a good day. I thought we would try to add a Christmas song to our Bible reading, if we have time. Because I have a two-day Bible reading today. So we'll be reading Revelation chapter 8, which is talking about the seventh seal. And then going to Revelation chapter 9, that's today's reading. And then we'll do both of our Proverbs and um, Psalms for both days. And then we'll do our homework after that and see if we still got time for a song. Uh, yeah. Excuse me for just a moment. You can do them separately. I can? Mm. Oh, I get to do two separate videos. So I will break them down so it won't be as long for you guys. So we'll be doing Revelation chapter 8. And the Psalm and Proverbs for yesterday, and then I'll go over the homework for today. Well, what it would have been yesterday, and we'll answer it, because you guys were supposed to guess the river Jesus was baptized in, and then we'll have another question for today, and I will answer it when I get back to the other one. Okay, so let's get started here with Revelation chapter 8. The seventh seal and the golden censer. When he opened the seventh seal, when Jesus opened the seventh seal, he was the only one worthy to open the scroll with the seven seals, remember. Now the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour, 30 minutes. There was silence. You, mad, you know how many people's got to be up there. Plus all the angels. And everybody was completely silent for 30 minutes. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God. The seven trumpets were given to them. We all know when the trumpet calls. It's the end of times. Another angel who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar. Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. He was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all God's people on the golden altar in front of the throne. The smoke of the incense, together with the prayers of God's people, went up before God from the angel's hand. Because remember, in our last Bible reading, it was telling you about how the angel had the bowl that with like incense stuff coming up out of it. And those were the prayers of God's people on earth. And you wonder how God can listen to everybody's prayers every day. He can. He can. He's so much more powerful than we are. He is the Almighty. He's the one that created everything. He's going to listen to all of our prayers. And the angels all talk to God on our behalfs. And he has plenty of angels. He sure does. Time doesn't work the same in heaven as it does here on earth. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and hurled it on the earth. And there came peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. Then the seven angels, who had the seven trumpets, prepared to sound them. The first angel sounded his trumpet, and there came hell and fire mixed with blood. And it was hurled down on the earth. This is not just like certain parts of the country. This is going to be everywhere on the earth. Everywhere. So don't think if this happened in these uh, eastern countries we don't know about. No, it's, the whole world will be experiencing this when the end of the world's here. So when everybody's experiencing this and you hear the trumpets and see Jesus coming down, that's the end of the world. Not before, like some people try to get you to believe the end of the world is here. Yeah, right at the door. Sure it is, because we don't know when it's going to happen. Even Jesus doesn't know when it's going to happen. Only God knows. Jesus won't even know till the day God says he's ready. Okay? So the first angel sounded his trumpet, and there came hell and fire mixed with blood, and it was hurled down on the earth. The third of the earth was burned up. A third of the trees were burned up. And all the grass was burned up. 
the second angel sounded his trumpet, and something like a huge mountain all ablaze was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea turned into blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. I told you guys, the end of the world is going to be scary. It's going to be very scary, especially for the people who don't know for sure that they are saved and going to heaven. The people who don't serve Jesus and our God. They're the ones that has to worry. Us who are saved, who love Jesus, don't have to worry. The only thing we got to worry about is it hurting others who are not. That's why we need to pray for them now who are not saved. Especially for our own families, because if we don't do it, who will? I have so many people in my own family who are lost. All my sisters are lost, my blood sisters. I have three, and all three of them are lost. My nephew, he's lost. So many more I could tell you. Just think about the loved one you have that you love most in this world. And think about them going to hell if they don't believe. If they don't have Jesus in their hearts and love the Lord. If they're not saved. You wouldn't want that happening to them. You need to pray for them. Pray for them and let God take care of the rest. God can change a person's heart. But we need to pray for them and let him know that we love that person enough to pray for them. But that person's, we believe they're worthy of helping. Please change them. Please change their heart and heart. The third angel sounded his trumpet and a great star blazing like a torch fell from the sky on the third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is wormwood. A third of the waters turned bitter, and many people died from the waters that had been bitter. The fourth angel sounded his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon and a third of the stars, so that a third of them turned black. A third of the day was without light, and also a third of the night. Could you imagine being on this earth, Bert? Pretty much it's total darkness all the time. It is like that in some places now because they have, you know, long periods of time where it's dark outside and long periods of time where it's light out. But this ain't what we're talking about. <laughs> we're talking about being turned black. No light whatsoever. And that, that's going to be scary. As I watched... I heard an eagle that was flying in midair call out in a loud voice, Whoa, whoa, whoa to the inhabitants of the earth because of the trumpet blasts about to be sounded by the other three angels. So you wonder what they're going to bring with them, the other three angel trumpets. Maybe we'll find out in today's Bible reading. That'll be the reading after this one, guys. Okay, so our psalm for yesterday is Psalm 136. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. This is the psalm here. It's a little bit longer, and you'll hear His love endures forever, over and over and over. That's mainly what this psalm is. So just letting you know, I knew it was coming up. Give thanks to the Lord, or th give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders. His love endures forever. Who by his understanding made the heavens. His love endures forever. Who spread out the earth upon the waters. His love endures forever. Who made the great lights. His love endures forever. The sun to govern the day. His love endures forever. The moon and stars to govern the night. His love endures forever. 
to him who struck down the firstborn of Egypt, his love endures forever. That was during the great plagues, remember, when Egypt had hostage as slaves, the Hebrews, the Israelites, and brought Israel out from among them, his love endures forever. With a mighty hand and outstretched arm, his love endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea asunder, his love endures forever. When he brought the sea apart so the Israelites can walk through it to safety, and when the Egyptians were coming after them, remember, because they changed their mind, and they were, they were going back to enslave them, the water came, the sea came back together and killed all of them, the Egyptians that were chasing the Israelites. All the Israelites made it safely through to the other side. But swept away Pharaoh and his army into the Red Sea, his love endures forever. To him who led his people through the wilderness, his love endures forever. To him who struck down great kings, his love endures forever. And killed mighty kings, his love endures forever. Shion, king of the Amorites, his love endures forever. And Og, king of Bashan, his love endures forever. And gave their land as an inheritance, his love endures forever. An inheritance to his servant Israel, his love endures forever. He remembered us in our low estate. His love endures forever. And freed us from our enemies. His love endures forever. He gives food to every creature. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven. His love endures forever. Yes, it does. Amen. Forever and ever. Things may be crashing down on you and your life here on this earth. You may be feeling like there's no hope, but there's, you can't depend on anything or anyone. But there's one thing you can always depend on, no matter how bad things get. God is always here, and He is always the same, and will always be the same. Yesterday, today, and forever, God will not change. Okay, guys, and that was our Psalm, Psalm 136. And now we're going to read Proverbs chapter 30, verses 7, 8, and 9. Two things I ask of you, Lord. Do not refuse me before I die. Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my bread. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, Who is the Lord? That happens a lot. You want to talk about the Israelites who were in the desert. How we went over that. How they kept turning their backs on God. And then God would help them. And they would be okay for a while. And then the same things over and over and over again. That's why they had to wander the desert for 40 years. That generation who got freed was not going to make it to the promised land. But the next generation would. Because God punished them for the way they acted. The way they treated him. Who was the one to uh, who freed them and took care of them in the desert day and night. Even feeding them with manna, with the bread of angels from heaven. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my bread. Otherwise I may have too much and disown you and say, Who is the Lord? Or I may have become poor and still and so dishonor the name of my God. <laughs> and they're asking the Lord, don't make me too rich and don't make me too poor. Make me like satisfied with what I have. Because if I have too little, I might steal and dishonor you, God. If I have too much, I may be like I don't need God now. So who is God? That's what that was getting at there. Okay, so let me go over our question. I'll wait and do the prayer requests on the next video here because there's no sense in us going over them twice because it's the same things. Um, okay, so the answer to yesterday's, the day before yesterday's question was what river was Jesus baptized in? He was baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan River. 
And today's question is, we just talked about this the other day too. I didn't know this was going to be a question coming up, but we talked about this. What was the name of the town that Jonah was supposed to spread the word of God in, but the city was so bad, the people so evil, that Jonah was scared and disobeyed God and did not go? Thought he could run away from God, remember? And then the well swallowed him up. And God let him out three days later, after Jonah knew what he did was wrong, and was, I was about ready to say the name of the place, but what town was that that Jonah was afraid to go to? All right. Okay, guys, that was everything for that Bible reading. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and I'm going to get started on your next Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.